Okay, now I am recording uh, and I will talk about uh, the second topic of our computer graphics class, uh, which would be uh, which would be images display and perception. Uh, so if you recall from our previous session, uh, computer graphics is all about creating an image, a realistic image of the scene defined. Uh, and that image, so we will today see details about that image, some very low level image processing, and then how it is displayed, the display devices. Uh, and eventually how it is perceived by human beings. Uh, it is the ultimate goal to satisfy a person with computer graphics, right? Uh, so uh, display hardware, there are a variety types of display hardware around. Actually, one of them is not still around, I believe. So this is the tube version, the cathode ray tube CRT. Uh, it is mostly outdated. We have LCD and LED around, uh, liquid crystal display and light emitting diodes. So what really concerns us is this mechanism probably. Uh, so we have a raster of pixels, okay, an array of pixels. So all we need to do is to fill in these entries actually in computer graphics, okay? Uh, and each pixel, uh, depending on the image format, it can have one value, one, one channel, grayscale from zero to 250-50, or sometimes it is three-dimensional. We uh, store three channels on a given single pixel. Uh, okay, so the three-channel version is this. Uh, we essentially, uh, use a combination of three main colors, red, green, and blue. Uh, for instance, if we blend green and blue, we end up with cyan, uh, which is one, one. So we get full green, full blue, and we end up with that color, etc. cetera. Uh, okay, uh, so what happens in the background when we have some information to display on our screen, on our raster display device. So we, uh, our application, this one in CPU, uh, it talks with the frame buffer, okay? Uh, and from frame buffer, so it uh, fills a buffer of screen size and this buffer, uh, using uh, your video driver goes to the panel uh, of your video screen, okay? Uh, and the video screen can be anything like a big monitor or even a cell phone uh, monitor, etc. Uh, so the generated images are sent to a display device uh, through this driver. Uh, and from operating systems, as you know, we uh, we don't really talk directly with the driver. We talk with some kind of API uh, at the programming user level, and that API is able to talk with the driver, and that driver is able to talk with the operating system, which in the end uh, issues comments to the uh, hardware, the device. Uh, since the human eyes are more sensitive at the lower regions, at the lower brightness, lower intensity values, we, uh, the voltage, the input pixel value, we, uh, even if it is doubled, we still keep it low. We, uh, because we are good at separating low brightness values. This is all about biology. Uh, and obviously as the pixel, the intensity increases, the pixel color value increases, you should obviously increase the brightness at some point, but it will uh, not be linear. Okay, so this is the idea of gamma correction. And this is that nonlinear function, it is exponential. And this gamma is 2.2. This is all 
we can say about the, that issue. And then I can talk a little bit about images themselves. So images are a raster of picture elements or a, an array of pixels. Uh, and it is, uh, it comes in a rectangle shape with width and height, not necessarily the same. Uh, and at a low resolution, you can really separate pixels from each other. Uh, but as you increase these number of pixels, uh, it will be uh, unrecognizable to the human eye, which is a good thing actually, because we don't want this one. Uh, so pixels are actually samples from a continuous function. So after all, whatever you your target is, it is a real world object. It is not discrete, uh, but we sample it at uh, locations. Uh, and these samples in computer graphics, they are, uh, they, they, they are represented by rays from the uh, image, the focus point, focal point towards the sample locations in 3D. Uh, but sampling gives errors, obviously. So for instance, uh, if this is your original function, continuous function, and if you sample these on the red points only, the reconstruction under some principle, like under the, for instance, the, in general, we want to minimize the cost of using something. So here, the shortest curve passing through this uh, set of red points, uh, can be a polyline actually here it, instead of in addition to shortness we also consider some smoothness so we end up with this output which is not the same as our original signal okay so in other words sampling brings errors the errors can be due to limited resolution which is the number of red samples and can also be due to limited spatial resolution which is the Alice. Alice. Uh, so let's talk about the intensity resolution first. Uh, here we need to talk about quantization. What is that? Uh, so to represent an intensity, a color, I I can use eight bits. Okay. So which gives me numbers from zero to two fifty six, right? With eight bits, you can represent as much as uh, 255. So, which is the best thing you can in this example. With the extreme example, where you have only one, pit, one bit per pixel color, then it can be either one white or zero black. So the same <clears throat> image, with a quantization level of one bit will be this. You cannot do better than this <clears throat> because of this limitation. I have a limited intensity resolution. <clears throat> but if you give uh, numbers from zero, one, two, and three, so you give four numbers using two bits, then you have a better shape compared to one bit version, but again, uh, the best solution to the human eye actually uh, is eight bits. You can even do 16 bits uh, and, but eight bits and when you compensate this with three other channels like RGB, then it will be uh, good for human eye. And that is the standard. So this is still not the standard because here I am using only one channel, the gray channel, but uh, when we use multiple channels like here, <clears throat> uh, then we are good to go. Uh, so let's talk about color image then. 24 bit per pixel. Okay, so what does it mean? I have eight bits 
for one channel, I have three channels. So I have 24 bits per pixel. Okay, compared to eight bits per pixel, I move from this image to, uh, obviously these are different images, but I think you get the idea. Uh, you have the better output with three channels and with eight bits quantization. That is the standard actually. It is sufficient for human eye. Uh, so what about the other sampling error? It is the error due to limited spatial resolution. I mean the following. Uh, after all, we have, uh, so these are, I am drawing a line here and uh, the, the, there are sharp transitions from white to black directly. Uh, so I cannot put uh, smaller primitives here because there are multiple pixels here actually in the background. If you look at the anti alice version, uh, you will see that better. So you essentially prevent sharp transitions between colors. So you make that smooth by just using uh, averaging colors in the transition steps, which gives you this A at right in the uh, big picture compared to this allied version. And with images, uh, we have further tools to enhance the images or to uh, increase the number of images. For instance, maybe you are implementing a deep learning application and you need a training data set. Uh, so, but in real world, your data can be noisy. So what you do is you take a good image and you add some noises or some blurs to that, like bad effects to that, and add that to your training data sets in your network architecture to train your network architecture. So you essentially say that this is the correct version and this is the artificially uh, worsened version of the image. So, so that be prepared to get a, an imperfect input and get what I want, give me what I want. So to obtain those new images out of the existing ones, you can use uh, different filters, all kinds of filters here, like blurring or adding noise, or sometimes the opposite. Sometimes you don't even deal with that deep learning problem. You have an image, uh, but there is some noise on it. You want to get rid of that to look at a better image. Uh, for instance, here, uh, mean filter, so do I talk about them? Okay, here. Uh, so here you convert this image into this one, which is at a better shape, right? Uh, so what you do here is you, your filter is generally a three by three block. You move it along your pixels, which is uh, in 2D array, as you know. So in the mean filter, you just take the one ninth of each one, and add them up and replace this value with that average of these nine values. So 150 goes and some uh, values smaller than 150 comes here in this scenario. Uh, and median filter, it actually, uh, instead of taking the average, it just puts the median value, which is 124 here, instead of this value. Then, uh, there won't be any smoothing effect because you are using an existing value. It just uh, keeps it more sharp. And here is the median value effect. So with uh, the mean filtering, you wouldn't get this clear output, right? Because, because of these blacks and whites, you will get a very gray color here. But in this case, you put here either white or Actually, these are not black, that's why you don't see, uh, you see a gray color here, but so the dots here are exactly the color you see here. 
and it really does a good work, especially in the coins, you can see it even better. So because of the less smoothness, you can still see the face of this character a little bit. Mm. Other popular filters are like edge direction filters, uh, Kenny or so Sober are the popular choices. So what they do is, uh, this is the filter actually. What you do here is you uh, look at the neighboring values and at your value. So if the neighboring values, the eight values are the, uh, are the same as your value, uh, then uh, you ha have zero here, right? Because you have uh, mi minuses and you just add uh, the positive effect. So the gradient, the level of change is zero here because the situation inside the hair because everything is at the same color. But when you go to the border, like between hair and forehead, uh, then this will be non-zero, giving you the location of the edge. Another filtering can be sharpening. So what you do here is uh, you uh, uh, you get your edges, edge image on G, uh, and you can get that by subtracting the smoothed version from the original image. So now you have these image edges and you amplify them, like increase their power using factor K and add that to the existing image, which will eventually uh, sharpen that part. So here is a better example here, obviously. Uh, the edges are contribute, contribute even more because I have uh, I first detect them and then use them with their k times power and add them back to the scene. Uh, there are rotations or other transformations on the images uh, on 2D. to so again, depending on your application, they may be necessary like to scale the object uniformly in both X and Y directions, or you can even do non-uniform scales or rotations or deformations. Uh, so you will see these actions in 3D, also in 2D. So where do they come from, etc. Uh, there is also deformation effect with which you can so simulate some lenses. Uh, And actually, uh, not here, but I just remember this other cool uh, paper or uh, image processing tool. So let me just introduce that real quick. Uh, so th this is the way I go in this class, by the way. And I suddenly remember a cool thing. I share that with you. So that the one I remember is seamless carving, seam carving, okay, seam carving. So, but, uh, okay, I think, and okay, that, that's, that, this is it. So seam, so here, when you resize the image, it, you lose context, right, in general. In, but not in general, always, if you do a regular resizing in one direction, non-uniform rescaling. But what this paper does is, uh, instead of getting rid of pixels in uh, vertical lines, they just go and find this line from top to bottom, a, con a continuous line, a path, but it is not necessarily vertical. It is, it is a path such that the, uh, 
number of edges or the level of edges on this pad is as less as possible. So in other words, this pad goes through the smooth parts, the uniform parts of the image. So when you remove it, you don't really miss it. Okay. Uh, so that is the idea. It, it looks cool. Actually, the actual video is not that. So I couldn't find it. But uh, so if I just look for sim carving. Yeah, OK. Yeah, so this is the one I talk about. So sim carving. So this happens. It's images like uh, cr cropping is one method of reducing size, but then you definitely lose content, uh, not to mention. And uh, okay, so this is the one I uh, the scaling. If you do regular scaling, like it distorts a lot. And this is what they address in this project. So a cool image processing application called seam carving. Uh, again, this is a rather old paper. There are lots of follow-ups on this work. Uh, so it is an inspiring work for uh, many image processing people. Uh, so in this example, it is even better. So this is not a wild example. So what they tell here is, Uh, okay. So you look at, you pass it through your edge filter and you have your gradients, your edge locations. And instead of, so if you remove just vertically, uh, it doesn't work nice. They didn't show that version one, did they? Uh, so let's see again. Yeah, so removing this is not recommended uh, because you will lose this very important corner information. What you do is you go through, uh, you go around that. That is the main idea, actually. And uh, OK, so here you can see that if you do vertical removal, as you can see, the distortion uh, so let me show it again. Although they show the line here, the real distortion is happening in the middle. That's why we didn't see it in the first place. But okay, so this is the worst. This is the bad example. This is the. This is not the algorithm. This is the naive solution. What they propose propose in the algorithm is to go through this rather more uniform uh, set of pixels. So less variety over the path. They go for that, and. With that, as you can see, the letter K, the corners, they are all preserved. Okay, so, and another, so for instance, this is even more clear example. So obviously for an horizontal line, you wouldn't make it pass through the trees because then you would be losing some information eventually. But these uniform stuff, they just scream for being removed and they get that. For vertical, it is not that clear uh, to human eye, uh, but still finding this uh, zigzaggy path with the less variety turns out to be efficient because sometimes we also want to uh, remove stuff in the X, Y direction, in the horizontal direction. So this is inevitable. You have to choose this vertical line as well, then you pick the best. But if your task is just to make the scaling from top to bottom, then obviously you will always go through the sky, not through the trees. And this is the first version of that. Uh, by the way, you can also enlarge it, right? The same idea. You can just add more of this stuff without distorting these actual content. And distorting here is inevitable, is uh, indistinguishable to the human eye. So this is how you enlarge. So this is not all about 
shrinking. This is also growing. So we call this resizing in both directions. Okay, uh, so now I can come back. Actually, there are more tricks. So let's, since now we are at it. So let me also show you more examples on this same thing. So there are some additional features you can do, like although this is an automatic algorithm, some features can be uh, Uh, can be very valuable for you. you. You cannot just miss them. So you protect them, you mark them and tell your zigzag pets not to pass through these uh, marked locations. Okay, then you will definitely preserve the features or another fun application. Maybe you break up with your friend uh, and then you focus, you explicitly tell the pets to go through those uh, locations, right? Then you also have that Photoshop application in very quickly. Yes, another dramatic example here uh, in case of breakups can be used. Yeah, okay. So these are the uh, actions. This is our band, by the way. Uh, Metulica from Metu. So if you are interested, you can watch that as well uh, later on. Uh, so what am I doing? Stop here and now we will continue and finish the business. Uh, yeah, so image handling, another image action is blending so or composing composite compositing com composing compositing uh, so this is the blue screen or green screen maybe you have heard of you uh, you replace the specific color in this case blue is that color uh, with the existing images colors, but you overwrite uh, the ex the pixels in the existing image using your non-blue pixel colors. Okay, so this is what blending does actually. Uh, so you can predefine this color. In general, we pick green because green is the less used color, a very light green. Uh, but you don't have to go with a specific color. In most of the tools, software, they allow you to choose your uh, background color and then it automatically uh, treats those colors as invisible. And in, in the end, you blend or compose a new picture using two pictures, okay? So this is called alpha blending. Uh, so when alpha is zero, uh, it is transparent, so you don't use it, which is the case happening here with Elvis Presley and this person. Uh, but if you keep it one, then it will be opaque, non-transparent. Uh, and we blend the foreground color with the background color with this linear operation. This is very basic, actually. Uh, and images in, in enough with the processing operations. So there is a huge computer vision class that can be done here, like how to segment images. Like we detecting edges is not enough to segment this person from the whole image. So one application is that. And deep learning and machine learning methods fit very well to the image processing area because uh, everything is regular. Every pixel has four neighbors. So it is easy to learn stuff on pixel domain, on image domain. So in that image processing class that you took or may take, you will see in-depth analysis of these operations. Uh, so here I am done with the processing since we are in computer graphics. And I will have 
a few more words about images, then we will finish. So image formats, how to store images on computer. Uh, typically, we use eight bits per channel, uh, and we use three channels, giving 24 bits per pixel, 24 BPP. Uh, so we can send images to the monitor directly through video card, or we can save them. Uh, and there are many formats to keep these eight bits and three channel thing. Uh, JPEG is the most popular one, but it is lossy. Uh, we have also lossless formats. Uh, so PPM is a lossless format, so, but it is not efficient. You literally keep uh, three entries per pixel, okay? So in this example, I have a four by four image, one, two, so every square here, the red one, it is one pixel, okay? And that red is this, red, green, blue, 255, 00, will give you this uh, color. So obviously you don't lose any information, but there is a big deal of redundancy here. So lots of repetitions, okay? So PPM is not that, useful. It is very easy to parse and use, but it is not useful at all. Uh, and you can even calculate uh, the size uh, of a very basic image. It goes as high as 200 megabytes, uh, hugely inefficient. So then comes this compression formats, lossy or lossless. JPEG is lossy, but PNG is lossless. These are the two popular choices. Uh, for what JPEG does is actually, there is a good video on this, about this on com Computer File YouTube channel. Uh, so what it does is it separates, it uh, divides the image into eight by eight blocks. So here, one block, another block. So these are those blocks. And for each block, it represents that as with a representative value, okay? Like the average of that pixels. Obviously it is not the average, but it represents the uh, little sub image in that block using uh, cosine basis, okay? Uh, so it uses a linear combination of cosine functions to represent here uh, and what you store here is that those coefficients. It is the idea. So again, this is not the main topic of a computer graphics class, but there is a very uh, gentle discussion about this on computer file. Actually, okay, I have also given the link here. Uh, so JPEG is lossy, uh, you store less, uh, bytes, but it ruins the pixel and you cannot re recover the original from this guy. However, uh, by using more coefficients, you can uh, get a lossy image that cannot be used to get the original image, but still the lossy version is still good for you. It is still almost, uh, to your human eye, it is uh, inseparable from the original version, then there's the loss, no, not a big deal. Okay, so human eye, speaking of human eye, we can see, distinguish about 10 million different colors, okay? Uh, so... Hocam, uh, by the way, the, yes. in the previous slide, it was saying that PNG, the portable network graphics, was a lossy, I think. Uh, really? Is, isn't that lossless? I mean, PNG, I the... PNG is lossless here. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Okay. JPEG is lossy. PNG is lossless. Yeah, these two are very popular uh, choices. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. So, about the human eye, let's compare that to the eyes of other. Uh, creatures like bees and other insects mostly they are they have better eyes than us actually because they can detect 
ultra violet violet lights like more vertice lights uh, which cannot be detected by us and this is for the uh, evolution why that light detection they can find better nectars uh, these visible spectrum however so although it goes further than violet it cannot do well with the lower values so it ends uh, just before the orange so it cannot really understand the orange and uh, yellow uh, the down uh, below orange birds however can see some red wave lights wave, wavelengths although not as far as into the light spectrum as humans uh, so let's see that so uh, so what we see is actually runs from red to violet uh, like in this figure and a combination of them makes up uh, all other colors uh, yeah so the, this is more or less a biology slide so let's not get into that a lot but it tells that our uh, spectrum definitely cannot see everything possible uh, that wor world can offer to us uh, and we should keep that in mind while uh, designing our display devices uh, it is the moral of the story about the perception uh, okay uh, so now i am done with the introduction part actually as you can see uh, and uh, this is also enough for today uh, because there is no need to go mathematical with the ray tracing stuff so let's start that fresh next week uh, so today i hope to give gave you a proper motivation to learn computer graphics uh, and I have also given some uh, basic examples on modeling, rendering, and animation. Uh, and we will fill in the details throughout the semester. That is the task. We have already filled in details about images, image processing. So we didn't do much details actually, but this is what they deserve in this class. So we get them out of our way. Uh, and now we will focus on direct computer graphics issues. Do you have any questions?